Hi, it's me again, Callum from Time Valley Motorhomes. And today I'll do the handover on the Malibu 640 LE GT Charming. So starting on the driver's side of the vehicle, as this is a Continental vehicle, it's got the sliding door on the side. You've got a full fly screen on here as well for in the summer months. You've got your step control, which is the first switch nearest the door. So do just make sure that's popped in before you start driving. And then just located, just beside your orange marker light underneath is your waste water drain off. So anything you've put down a plug hole, sink, shower or hand basin goes into here and you can just open and in the middle there it will start to trickle out underneath the vehicle. So normally on a site you would drive over a, a specified place to drop this water. Coming around the back, on the back panel you do have your water so this is your fresh water intake, opens with the Cathargo key open that and it is a lockable cap go and buy yourself a hose pipe and some ends because most sites are just a brass tap so you'll need the hose lock and the screw on hose in there until the lever overflows or until you're happy you've got enough water on board which you can see on your main control panel and then to empty it you've got to go inside and just underneath the mattress there there's a little pull out bit where your main tank is and this screw on here, so this round screw just here, this one, tells you there to empty, you would just simply turn, you can either turn, turn it all the way to empty the fresh water, which is just this one here. On this side of the door you do have your gas sticker which indicates your gas locker is just behind here and it is it's here so you've got LPG liquid petroleum gas you can fit two bottles in here we've got our test bottle on at the minute which is a bit too big for this one but you can get two smaller bottles in you'd obviously strap them in turn them off when you travel and turn on when you get there and this is an easy pigtail so all you, you don't need a spanner you just hand tighten it it's a left hand thread and you nip it up with your fingers and then turn the bottle on and off at the top. And of course do make sure it's strapped in. You've got your false floor here so it means that if you're loading um, for a bigger trip you can use the false floor and use through loading at the bottom where you put your luggage hooks to tie your loads down. Or if you're loading bigger items like awnings and so on you would just lift this off and take it out. And on the bottom of the bumper of the vehicle, you've got your reverse sensors. So once inside the vehicle, you've got your main 12 volt panel here, and you've got your heating and hot water panel, which I'll get onto a second. So you've got your on off switch here. This will either give you 12 volt. If you're not hooked up or if you are hooked up, you'll get a light here to say you're hooked up. Above you've got your music note, which is if you have a radio fitted, what that does is, instead of having the ignition on to work the radio and potentially flattening your engine battery, if you do like to listen to your, the radio on the morning, if you click that, it will put the radio onto your leisure battery. So then if you're on a site, you can have the radio on as long as you want, as there is no risk of flattening the battery. And then down here, so you've got the one with the battery at the back of the vehicle. If you touch that there, that's your leisure battery. It gives you your leisure battery reading. Then you've got your water, which is your fresh water reading, which is half a tank. You've got your other one, which is your waste water. And as I've just opened it from outside, it's empty. And then you've got the battery at the front of the van, which is your engine battery.
and across from it is a heating and hot water Truma control panel. So to turn this on and off, you'd press and hold and then you'll get this screen here and then you've just got to press enter to enter into the various settings. So you've got the motorhome with the thermometer in the far left hand corner. This is the temperature of your vehicle. So you can have it all the way up to 30 degrees or all the way to off. Once you're happy, you would just press enter and preset that at 30 degrees. Then you've got your thermometer in water. This is how hot your water is going to be. So if you've got no water in, you'd have it on off. So as this is like a kettle, so if you've got no water in, don't have the heat hot water on as it will burn the element out. You've got on eco, which is heating your water at 50 degrees, which you'd probably have if you were showering in the vehicle. And then if you were doing your dishes, you would heat your water at 70 degrees, which is hot. And then if you wanted to prioritize the water, you can put on boost. And what boost will do is it'll turn the heating off, get the water to temperature before putting the heating back on. So for this, we'll just say hot. And moving on, you've got which energy source. So there's your gas bottle and your electricity symbol. So you can have it on gas if you're wild camping. You can have it on a mixture of one kilowatt of electric and gas. Have it on a mixture of two kilowatts of electric and gas. This is double the source, so this is very good in the winter if it's very cold or you're in desperate need of hot water. Put on mix two and it will get the vehicle to temperature or the water. And then you've got electric on one kilowatt and electric on two. Normally you would use electric on two on more sites, but if you're abroad, you can use electric on one. Just depending on what output of electricity the site gives you. So for this, we'll just say gas. And moving further along, you've got your fan, so you can have your fan on eco, high, or boost. So you'd normally use it on eco if you're wild camping. If you are on hookup, you can have it on high and boost but I'd probably put on eco overnight if you're having the heating on as it stops the fans from wearing so much. Coming down to the bottom left hand corner you've got a timer so you can time the heating to come on and off once. You've got a clock to display the clock on the display panel and you've got a spanner there so if you get a worn triangle in the middle you'd go to your spanner there and you can go to reset. You press reset It'll then say preset, press again and it will reset your control panel and then you would have to reset, reset everything. So you'd have to put your temperature, your water, your energy source, your fan and so on. In the kitchen area, you've got two gas burner rings, which has got a little piezo igniter there as well. And then on this side, you've got your fridge. So to operate your fridge, it's just a touchscreen panel. It's very simple, it's just a 12 volt fridge. So you turn on and off here by pressing and holding, and then you'd scroll up like so, and keep clicking to get the temperature higher. And you do have a night mode, so you can click, click the moon. And what that'll do is it'll just lower the decibels of the fridge. Not that they are noisy when operating because they're 12 volt, but just to stop it, the compression, uh, system kicking in you can turn it to night mode to stop it to be a little bit quiet uh, you've got your fridge with your freezer box again once you finish using the vehicle for any length of time so if you stand it up for a month or you stand it up for a couple of months over the winter time and not using the vehicle always clean your fridge out or take any remaining shopping items out give it a spray out with some anti back give everything a clean and then the last thing you want to do is close the door so if you pull this little blue catch out halfway and then just shut the door very gently as you can see that door isn't flush means that the air circulating in and out the fridge and then you've got your sink in your kitchen so you as long as the power's on, just turn the tap on and that's your water getting the temperature there. And you do have your sink cover to go on so you can put the back half on. Or you can use it as a chopping board or extra space on the worktop when using the hub. Storage above, which is remember just to push the catch in underneath the handle to release the door. cutlery drawer and a gas tap 
we can isolate the gas to the hob should you require but any problems with gas turn the bottle off just to be safe these are mainly for when the vehicle is serviced got your draw storage a cupboard there and another cupboard here and a cupboard there for other bits and pieces. Three pin plug for when you are hooked up. You can put a kettle in there should you not want to use a gas one. And now in the washroom area, as you know on the Malibu panel vans, you do have a fold away toilet. So if you use your guide on, your, on the foot here, just to pull the toilet out. And at the same time, if you just push on this handle and slide the toilet into the middle and then you would just pull the toilet lid up the flush is just located here very unusual place to put it underneath here so it's quite hard to find it first so as long as the main control panel's on, you press and there's water in the tank, press and it will fill the toilet with water. Always fill it with water first as it lubricates the blades and then you are going to open the blade by using the grey lever here. So you slide it to the right, deposit it into the cassette, use the toilet, obviously flush the toilet after use and ice and isolate the cassette. You've got to isolate the cassette otherwise it will not come out so shut the blade and the cassette will come out the outside of the vehicle and then if you are showering what you can then do is put the toilet away which gives you a bigger standing space put a plug there toilet roll holder cabinet for your toilet raise obviously Washing your hands, your hand basin, and then you do have your shower head. Obviously, with the shower head and the taps within the vehicle when you're winterizing, so you've opened the fresh and you've opened the waste outside, leave all the taps in the open position of the middle of the mixer, take the shower head off the shower hose, and lie the shower hose in the shower tray. As you can see, it's got quite a big loop in there. Any water could free, potentially freeze in there and that's not something you want so you would take the shower head off and allow this hose to lie in the shower tray and drain out by the shower tray and then you do have this little concertina door here which will cover all this from getting wet when showering and also in your toilet and showering area you have a small roof light which you just press this button in and slide it open for ventilation or you put it in here and have it as it's open and it's given a nice bit of ventilation in the summer months and then always make sure this button is a, the bar is above the button that means it's locked securely and you do have a blackout blind or a fly screen for when it's open and then in the back of this model you have two single beds going down the vehicle or you can sleep across as a double but most people who are taller will sleep down the vehicle and again with all the cupboards you just push the buttons in to open and you've got your light switches here you do have two switches either side of here which are for your little reader lights so you just turn them on when you're reading in bed or you want them just to put the light on And these straps are designed to hold the bed up when you are storing. So these beds fold up like so for storing bikes or bigger items in the back of the, the vehicle. And then this is showing you the storage area when the beds are folded up. That false floor that I showed you from outside, I've taken down just so I can show you into this cupboard here, which is where your boiler is. You've got these bars here. So when you are loading your bikes and things in, you'll probably want to take them away. They just clip out, but you must put them back in for the bed 
as these are designed for bearing the weight evenly across the furniture. We've got storage in here and again this will lift out and underneath the bed behind the shower and toilet area you've got your trips on mains electric so for kettle or anything trips the van try here before you try your site you've got access to your boiler for um, technicians when working on the boiler but you will not really need to be in there but in here will get nice and warm so if you've got bedding and things or clothes put them in here and they'll dry out and then just under here under this locker here obviously is access to the boiler you've got your fresh or should I say your hot water drain here and then your boiler drain is this one here so when the diamond is like ne near enough straight to the vehicle like it is there and the black nib on the top is down and the button on the bottom is pushed in the boiler is holding water it holds 10 litres of hot water at any one time in the winter it is very important that the water is drained out of the fresh tank of the waste tank the boiler and all the taps are left open otherwise water can freeze in the pipes which are just plastic and the boiler and then unfortunately it isn't covered under any warranty as it's your responsibility to drain the vehicle down and what you need to do is just turn it so the nib pops out in the bottom put pops out and then it drops all the water directly underneath the vehicle onto the ground leave it open the time the vehicle is not being used and then when you do come to reuse it obviously you'd shut your boiler shut your fresh water shut your waste water fill it up with a hose pipe again come in put the power on go to the cold side of the tap first you'll get automatic cold water go to the hot side it'll cough and splutter as it's drawn water from the fresh water tank into here 10 litres until it fills up and then you prime one tap you'd go to the next and then the system will be primed for the season also under the bed at the front if you just lift this up by the catch you've got your hanging reel for your wardrobe and you can access it from the front but you will have to just move the steps back ever so slightly to open the door and in the front lounge you have various storage points so if you do these coach clips and lift up you've got storage underneath your false floor here your raised floor you've got some storage underneath your two rear traveling seats and you've got a drawer on the front there as well and then operate your table if you pull this down you will be able to turn the bottom table plate out which then with the front passenger and driver seat turned round you'll be able to all four dine here at once above you dinette at the front you've got a toggle here on this skylight open your skylight always make sure that is closed fully when traveling and then you do have fly screen anti-blackout blind and then now in the cab, you have your handbrake to your right. What? You'd lift, you'd pinch your blinds and slide out. And there are the Remus cab blinds on the passenger window. And then if we do the windscreen, the, this, this little one here just needs to clip into there and then they are just magnetic and they cut around this sensor here
Then coming down to the driver's door, you've got electric windows, passenger and driver. You've got power fold wing mirrors. This is an option, they don't come standard with this. This customer has asked for the driver's pack, so it's got the folding windows, folding mirrors, should I say. Then at the front, you do have your mirror adjustment, which is the top and your bottom, so you've got two adjustments both ways with the joystick. Headlight adjustment, rear fogs, and this is how to turn your auto start stop off. If you've got it on and you're wondering why it's not working, um, Obviously, it all can do, all depends on what you're using. So whether you've got the the heating system on, the aircon, if the battery's that little bit low and it needs a run just to charge it back before it will start working. So that all depends on how the start stop works. So it'll only work when an optimum temperature the vehicle, the battery's at full charge, and there isn't various appliances on in the cab. You've got your wipers with the trip computer on the end of the stalk which would show you your tra um, traveling times, um, range, average and instant consumption, mileage covered, various points. And at the bottom here, you'll notice there is two vans on the lane. That is lane assist. This customer has asked for lane assist, which is part of the driver's pack. So they, they, that's another option. Then you do have your lights and your indicators your cruise control at the top, off in the middle, and speed limiter. Cruise control, you'd put on a cruise control at the top, get to the desired speed, and then push up, and that'll save that speed. You've got cancel, or if you do have to go for the brake for any reason, you can press resume, and it will go back to the speed that it was set at. Nine-speed automatic gearbox, again, another option. They come standard as manual, and you go down the gears, so you've got park, and then you put your handbrake on, reverse, neutral, drive, and then if you push to the left, you can go up and down the gears. So you can see there, it's got D there. You can go one, two, three. Or you can press driver's mode. So you've got eco at the bottom, normal, and power. I would just leave it on normal myself. Um, wouldn't put on eco because it doesn't save you any fuel. Put on to normal, and then should you need to drop a gear, um, and gain speed, you would just kick down on the accelerator, I'll drop the gear, and then you'll be gaining speed. So you very rarely need the power mode. Coming down into the cab, so you've got your climate control here. So this is your automatic climate control, so you choose your temperature, choose whether you want it to your face, your feet, or should I I should have said your face and your feet, and this is your distribution. Fan speed, off, turns this off. Max demist for the windscreen, aircon, and recirculation. And down here you've got traction control, so you can turn the traction control off. Hill descent control with it being an automatic. This turns your lane assist off, so if you do go over that line, um, there'll be a buzz or the steering wheel will vibrate, one of the two, and let you know that you have gone outside the solid white line and try and pull you back into the lane. If you don't want that, you can turn that off. Hazards, locks the doors um, on a night, and you do have your heated mirrors. USB for charging purposes, and a 12 volt. Cup holders here, glove box, and then at the top, you do have a heated and cooled glove box there. So if you've got stuff when in the summer, especially like sweets, chocolate, little bottles of water, put them in there and it saves you getting up to the fridge. And then if you just pull this from the back, this can be used as a phone holder, sat nav holder. You put your phone in and then you would lock it. So we'll just demonstrate that now. Put your phone in. Into there. Make sure your top of your device is in there and then you would just lock it into place that like so. Or you can use it as a paper clip and put your a map and your site reservations on there. And then last of all, to turn your seats, you've got little levers on both sides. You turn, 
pull out, pull the lever out, turn the seat. If it did get stuck, all you'd need to do is pull the seat forward from the front bar and then you can turn the seat round into the back of the motorhome. That now brings us on to the end of the handover on the Malibu 640 GT Charmin. Should you have any questions at all, please contact Time Valley Motorhomes on 01207 272 or you can email our sales department at sales at timevalleymotorhomes.co.uk or if you like the look of this vehicle and you're interested in one and you want more information, spec and price, feel free to contact our sales team. Thank you for watching this handover video.